Hey everyone and welcome back. It's another week over with. Where are these weeks going? These weeks are going too fast already. Stop it. <laughs> so this week's been really strange. I've been at uni twice. Two days. Tuesday, Wednesday. That's it. But I picked up a shift on Monday. So I worked Monday. I'm in work today. Today's Friday. And Thursday I had a mixture of things. I had some training up at the QE and then I had a couple of meetings and it was a bit of a bitty day, like it was really full on, but it was a nice day, so it was all right, I can't complain. So let's start with Tuesday. So Tuesday, we had a day of policy and politics. I wanna say it went good, but it went bad at the same time. So as you know, I have done my assignment <laughs> and I was crossing my fingers to make sure I hadn't done anything wrong. And in the morning lecture, they sort of said a few things and I thought, I'm gonna have to change my assignment. Luckily I don't have to change all of my assignment but there is a section that I'm going to completely remove and just adjust and change and put something else instead. So yeah, I want to make sure I get the high marks guys for this one so I'm doing everything possible I can to do that. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit of work but it shouldn't take that long I don't think. I just need to adjust some things and then after I've done that I can read it through, polish it, perfect it, ready for submission in April. Come on, I can do this. And then the second session we had, we had with, is a guy called Mike Adams, who's the head of the RCN West Midlands section. And he's fantastic. He used to be a lecturer at BCU and he did teach us back when I was a first year and then he left and then he's gone to the RCN. So it was really, really nice to see him back and giving us a talk. And he was speaking about leadership as a nurse and how we can incorporate that for our patients and be a better person, basically. And then Wednesday, as you all know, I love physiology. So I was really excited for Wednesday's session. We were in 12 to five and I thought, yes, I'm looking forward to this. We've got our new case study, which is Betty, who's got acute coronary syndrome slash a blocked coronary artery on the left side of her heart, causing a lot of problems for Betty and we have to fix it, <laughs> basically. And to be honest, in the lectures, I was thinking, yeah, I know this, I know this. Actually, everything's sinking in from the previous case studies. It's all linking and making sense. But there's other things with Betty that are really tricky, and I don't like this Betty girl. She's coming in with a lot of problems and really complicated things that you have to think about. The wider picture, not just her heart, and she's got She's got things like acute kidney injury going on. Her kidneys are like 50 minus 50% working and functioning and the medication she's on that's helping the heart is actually a nephrotoxic drug that's causing even more kidney damage. And oh, my mind's blown. I just, after the day, I was just like, I can't cope, <laughs> I can't cope with all these case studies. Come on, Betty, get out of hospital. Just get yourself well. Obviously, it's not that easy. I wish it was that easy to just fix a patient and let them go. But Betty is going to be a tricky one. I'm hoping I'm not going to have her for our exam because I think she's actually going to be the hardest. I was there thinking the liver's going to be the hardest, but actually Betty is so complicated. I don't think I want her. <laughs> I think I might be happy with liver. So, but we'll see. I'm praying because COPD is my favorite. I understand it. I love it. I can talk about it in an exam, I think, to a good enough mark where I can pass. And I'm not sure about the other two right now. And now that's just thrown me. Betty has thrown me because I was thinking Betty was going to be easy. But we'll see, we've still got, after Betty, we've got another case study to do, which is neurological injury. So we'll see how that one is. And if that one's not good, then, <sighs> and I hope, I hope, I'm hoping that all this is gonna link and it's all gonna sink in and everything that we're learning, I'm gonna remember in the exam. I don't know if I've said this yet, but we've got four case studies that we're doing. And at the end, they're gonna tell us which two so we get to pick one or the other, but they're gonna narrow it down to just two case studies. So at the minute, I only like one out of three, so it's not looking good for me. I'm just praying that one of them's COPD, please, because oh, it's gonna be horrendous. But do you know what? We need to keep positive. I can do this, and it's only because I'm fearing the unknown. And an exam's only easy, if you know what you're talking about right and you know what 
the case study is and you know what the function of the body is, it's going to be easy if you know it. And I don't know it unless I learn it. So I need to be on the ball. I need to get revising Betty and her coronary artery problems that she's got going on. Oh yeah, so we'll see. And then Thursday, as I said, I had training up at the QE hospital and, and this was our yearly refresher mandatory training that I've been going to for five years now. And to be honest, I wasn't looking forward to it as much as I love training, I love knowledge and things like that. But for the past four years, it's been the same fire training, the same PowerPoint presentation, the same guy doing it, the same speech. And I could probably give the session myself because I know it inside out now, this fire training. So I went in with the thought that oh, it's going to be the same one that I've got to listen to. Why aren't they updating this thing? And you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. I went in there. It was a lady and it was a brand new PowerPoint. And I was like, Ooh. I was so excited to be wrong. I was like, yes, thank you. There is a Lord out there that's listening to me, that telling them that they need to update this fire training. So it was really interesting and I actually found out a few things I didn't know before. So I didn't know that fire doors, and did you know, let me know, fire doors cost 3,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds. And you see people on the wards with the hospital beds, with the wheelchairs, just bashing through them, damaging these fire doors, which is then costing the NHS 3,000 pounds. And okay, it's not coming out of my pocket, so why am I annoyed? But I just thought, do you know what? No wonder we've got no funding because it's probably all going on these fire doors. Um, and I, that really shocked me. I thought, wow, £3,000 and people really don't look after fire doors. And then also another thing on the fire doors, there'll be a round circle, a little metal circle with an engraving with a number on it and some letters on it. And that number will be like a 30, 60, 90. And that's actually how many minutes that fire door, that's how much time you've got between you and the fire. So usually it's 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, but that actually tells you how long you have. Didn't know that before. Amazing. Then my third point, you probably already know this and I'm really sorry if you know this and I'm just providing you with new information, but I didn't know this before. This has really amazed me. So in the fire doors, if you look in a door, it's got in the, in the middle, it's got like the little fluffy thing that lines the door with a little plastic, it's like a little plastic strip or it looks like plastic. I don't actually know what the material is, but there's this strip and then there's a fluffy bit around it in between the doors. And that's actually the part that saves your life so that when the doors closed it sort of in interlinks with each other and it stops the smoke from coming through and it's actually the smoke that will kill you it stops the smoke from coming through and then it's actually the heat that activates that strip inside which then foams to provide a, a tight seal in between the doors so there'll be no gap at all and that's the other thing that saved your life it stops the smoke from coming through and if you are working in the NHS, if you're working in the healthcare system and you're looking at fire doors and you see any form of damage and you see that strip is damaged, please report it to everybody <laughs> that you can find. Report it because that little gap is going to let the smoke through. It's completely made the door irrelevant and it's not going to save your life anymore. So please, if you do see something like that, report it. I know I'm going to be reporting it now. The maintenance people are going to hate me probably, but do you know what? I'm going to save lives. <laughs> so yeah, so that really amazed me and I just wanted to pass on that bit of knowledge because if you don't know that and you're seeing this ha happen out there and you're seeing people barge through jaws or holding them open with fire extinguishers, which they should not be doing, please close them behind you and just report it because it can, when you think about it, you're going to be saving somebody's life if there was a fire. So have a think about it and that I took away so much and I was pleasantly surprised with that. That really made my day. So thank you for not being the same PowerPoint presentation and thank you for teaching me something. And then after that, I had my first meeting with Electra at University, who is fantastic. I really, I love her. I've got so much time for her. She's fantastic with students. She's amazing. But we are going to the RCN event. In March, we've got an RCN event and we're going to be having a stall and a poster sort of presentation thing that we're doing all about the student experience at university and how doing extracurricular activities, things like the Snowden challenge that we've done. If you haven't seen it, go back and see it. It's hilarious to watch. Things like that and how actually it builds us and the communication skills and the teamwork skills and how we can take that forward 
as, an, as a qualified nurse and doing extracurricular activities actually builds you and helps you grow for that nurse position in the future, if that makes sense. So we are just creating that at the minute. Hopefully it's going to be amazing and we do really well and I'm actually really excited. Um, really looking forward to it in March. I will vlog it. I will show you what it's all about nearer the time. So today I have my work. I'm going to work in a minute. I just need to have my breakfast and my tea. It's really early, I know. This is why I look a bit <laughs> drained and tired. Tomorrow, guys, tomorrow, I've got a whole vlog for you, a whole new vlog, and it's gonna be amazing. I don't know if you've seen these, or you might have already been to the Vivid Experience, which is like a, a fake post-mortem sort of setup. They use pig organs and different organs from animals and things. Um, to do like a post-mortem and it's really good learning experience to figure out the body and how it works it's a whole day session 10 till 3 i'm really excited for it and i'm vlogging all about it for the university and for you guys so you can see what happens there if you want to see that if you don't want to see that don't watch it please don't be offended by anything you see in my videos don't watch it just don't <laughs> But it's going to be amazing. I keep seeing people's posts on Twitter and Facebook and I've wanted to go to this for ages. A little bit pricey so I haven't paid for it and I've been waiting for this opportunity to go and vlog and do it. So now's my time. So look forward to that. I'm going to post that probably next Wednesday maybe or Thursday. Look out for that video. It's going to be amazing. I've got work on Sunday. I know I haven't got a day off pretty much this week. I've got actually I've got Monday off I've got Monday off which I'm going to take to do my vlogs and hopefully get them uploaded and posted Wednesday but we'll see but anyway have a great week guys have a great Sunday whatever you're doing have a great day I'm going to be at work right now when you're watching this probably so yeah I'm having a great time <laughs> so yeah so thank you as always for watching and I shall see you next week